Today we are going to review the microeconomics of imperfectly competitive markets. So that includes the market structures known as monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and monopolistic market structures. We've already reviewed the perfectly competitive market structure. Very quickly, that was a market structure that had the following characteristics. There were a very large number of firms producing a standard product uh, with very, uh, relative ease of entry or exit to and from the industry. Also, the perfectly competitive firm faced a horizontal or perfectly elastic demand curve, despite the fact that the industry had a typical negatively sloped demand curve and positively sloped supply curve. The firms in a perfectly competitive industry were the price takers. They took the price that was produced in the market. For imperfectly competitive firms, we have a somewhat different situation. So, even the firm faces a negatively sloped demand curve. This is because in imperfectly competitive market structures, there is a relatively small number of firms. Now, that may range from 75 firms in monopolistic competition to three or four firms in an uh, oligopolistic market to, of course, a single firm in a monopolistic market. But there are a relatively small number of firms. All three of those imperfectly competitive market structures will produce a demand, slur, uh, demand curve that is negatively sloped. Now, the demand curve has a negative slope because of the income effect, the substitution effect, and diminishing marginal utility, which we'll cover in other review sessions. Now, another characteristic of the imperfectly competitive firm is that it has a negatively sloped marginal revenue curve that lies inside of the firm's demand curve. Now, this is worth explaining. Let's say, for example, that this particular firm at this point on the demand curve is selling five units, that's the quantity demanded, at $10 per unit. If that were the case, then the total revenue the firm would gain from the sale of five units would be five times 10, which would be $50. Now the fact that the demand curve is negatively sloped tells us that if the firm wishes to sell a greater quantity, say six up from five, then it will have to do so at a lower cost, or a lower price, I should say. And so with these numbers as the example, if the firm wishes to increase its production from five to six, if it in fact sells those six, it will sell those six units at $9 rather than the $10 that it sold the five. So six units sold at $9 per unit will yield a total revenue of $54. Now, marginal revenue is nothing more than the change in the total revenue. So here, as we increased from five units to six units, the total revenue change was $50 to $54. So using this math as the example, the marginal revenue was 54 minus 50, or $4 we see that the marginal revenue for is less than the price of the product when six units are sold. The price of the product is nine. That is because when we increase production from the fifth to the sixth unit, it's not just this sixth unit that is sold at nine dollars, but the five previous units are now sold at, five, at nine dollars as well. In other words, the new price applies to all units uh, that are sold out in the marketplace. It's not as if the firm is selling the first five units at $10 a piece, plus selling a sixth unit at $9. That would give it a total revenue of $59. That is not the case. It's a single price for all units that are sold out in the marketplace. Now, once we understand that, I'm going to erase some of this to clarify. We can go ahead and draw our cost curves in, just like we do for the perfectly competitive market. Now, the cost really should be relatively unchanged from perfect competition because, of course, the costs have nothing to do with revenue. 
And so the firm is going to have a marginal cost curve that reflects increasing marginal returns and then di diminishing marginal returns. That's how we explain the U-shape of the marginal cost curve. We will also see an average total cost curve that intersects, I'm sorry, we will see that the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve at the average total cost curve minimum point. That's a mathematical necessity. So, 